Welcome to Aspire Art Auctions' new Cape Town venue at 37A Somerset Road in Devartakant. Our upcoming auction is headlined by this great Eduardo Villa called Sculpture 3, which he made in 1969, way ahead of his time. Its painted steel forms have a wonderful classical stability, while its bold diagonals give it the dynamism associated with action and forward movement. Come inside, we've got some more great works to show you. Sidney Kamalo is famous for his powerful figurative bronzes. Study for Mythological Rider 2 was produced in 1970, just a year later than the villa downstairs. Here he draws on his deep pride in Zulu traditions, as well as the rich cultural influences of Sophia Town where he grew up. Kamala's moving figure with hands extended is an impressive symbol of humanity in harmony with nature. William Kentridge's Garibaldi is a very different horse and rider. It was created from soft ground aquitant etchings and mounted on raw cloth. The Italian general Garibaldi became a national hero for his republican ideals and was admired and praised by intellectuals and political figures from Abraham Lincoln to Che Guevara. By depicting the great general on a wooden horse, Kentridge emphasizes that his extraordinary leadership skills in war were never at odds with his humanity, nor beyond humor. Robert Hodgins was famous for his titles. Left Out of Making Love in the Shadows is a deliciously comic work in which he hints at the delights and dramas to be discovered in the shadows. The central figure looks mystified. Why should she be alone while the others get lucky? And what is to be done about it? Painted in 2009, it is one of the last works produced by this great painter with his unique ability to seduce and delight us with his wit and color. Art historical treasures include these two exquisite still life paintings, painted in 1948 by Eric Loesch in London during his time at the Anglo-French Art Centre. The young energetic artist arrived in England in the spring of 1948 and decided to enrol at the centre to further study the various artistic approaches of the new modern movements. This liberal academy offered an exciting environment for Loebsche. Loebsche returned to still life painting as a subject throughout his long career. For him, the still life presented a means to explore all the essential elements of art. His still lives are autobiographical. They are a reflection of a specific time in his life, emotion and state of mind. But more importantly, they stand as icons of his various artistic achievements. Painted at the very start of his artistic career, Still Life with White Flowers and Still Life with Black Ball form part of a significant body of work that marks the beginning of Loebsch's lifelong exploration in new ways of seeing. post cubist in style, each painting depicts an arrangement of modest objects. A jug with two white flowers, a bowl with apples, loose cherries, all most probably from his studio in Abbey Road, on a cloth loosely laid out on a tabletop, rendered in simple shapes, some with stronger angular forms in bold bright colors. He adds strong black lines and dark coloring for visual impact and contrast. The scenes are beautifully stylized in small format and the artist's brushwork and handling of paint is exceptional. Loebscher lived and studied in London for just over two years, returning to South Africa in 1949. Paintings from his London period, predominantly still lives, are extremely rare and remain highly sought after. This striking painting by Georgina Gatrix was produced in 2010, the same year she presented her first international solo exhibition at Den Half Projects in Amsterdam. Sensational and dramatic, striking and expressive, the artist's thickly painted canvases continue to challenge the limits of painterly representation. Distorting shape and form, she offers a new reality, which often parodies contemporary popular culture. In a recent interview, Gratrix explains, my work is about understanding painting. It's about a materiality, but also, I think, in its most basic form, it's still lives in portraiture and using them as frameworks to understand my frame of reference, whether it's very personal or a broader worldview. In this evocative painting titled Most Beautiful Girl, 
The excessive application of oil paint forms the layers of makeup and decoration on her character's face, creating an expressiveness that is both compelling and alluring. Here, paint becomes matter as materiality and image collide. Of her portraits, Gatrick says, Beauty is something that really doesn't interest me at all. I'm more interested in unpicking beauty and moving it towards something that's uncomfortable, or it's so beautiful that it's not. It's my pleasure to introduce one of my favorite paintings on the auction by internationally renowned Swiss artist Uwe Witwe. His work really comes to auction internationally and we at Aspire are proud to debut Witwe with this exceptional painting in South Africa. Witwe's artistic practice reflects on the authenticity and truth of images. A collector of internet images himself, much of his subject matter is rooted in the history of art, particularly referencing images of old master paintings from the 17th and 18th centuries. Still Life Negative After David's is an impressive large-scale work that cites an image of Still Life with Fruit and Lobster, painted between 1648 and 1649 by the Dutch Jan David de Heem. In dealing with this historical source material, Witwe deconstructs and fragments the image by working in the negative. With her original image transformed, Witwe creates an alternative reality, suggesting that new meanings and narratives can be discovered within existing and familiar images. Still Life Negative after David's is a mysteriously beautiful work. It was exhibited at Horn Chavenison in London in celebration of Witwe's inclusion in the major exhibition Watercolour at the Tate Britain. This wonderful artwork is by Gerard Chakuma. Chakuma is a celebrated Nigerian artist and he has exhibited extensively in Nigeria, in the US and in Europe, and has been offered for auction in London, in Paris and in Nigeria. But this is the first time that he has been offered at auction in South Africa and Aspire are incredibly proud to present this work titled Adam and Eve. Chakuma is known for bold, large-scale works that he creates using a unique technique. He joins different pieces of wood together and then painstakingly engraves them. To this base, he adds paint and attaches pieces of recycled aluminium to create an incredibly rich and textured surface. This work is signed on the center panel with Gerard's monogram, GDY, and there is a wonderful story behind this monogram. It is a mixture of the artist and his wife's initials. Gerard views his wife as so supportive of him and his career in art. And he signs his work like this to acknowledge that she is so important, he views her as a co-creator. In addition to the fantastic selection of contemporary African works on the sale, we also have some lovely modern works. And here are two fantastic paintings by iconic South African landscape painter, J.H. Pion. In the work Extensive Landscape Free State, PNF captures the unique characteristics of the Golden Gate region, painting windy roaded sandstone outcrops in soft ochres and browns and interspersed with vivid green stretches of vegetation. This was painted fairly late in PNF's life, in 1955, and in it we see many of the distinctive elements of his well known later style. Using flat planes and simplified geometric structures, he presents the empty free state landscape in a harmonious and ordered way. The second work, Volker, or Clouds, is much earlier, from the early 1920s. The work has a rich textural quality and is stylistically consistent with the artist's early works, but it also includes many of the compositional elements and iconic motifs of the artist's later work. PNF organizes the landscape into well-defined spaces, leading the eye to the lonely farmstead which became one of PNF's most favored and recognizable motives. Above the farmhouse, there is a vast expanse of cloud-filled sky. These billowing clouds and impressive skies became a hallmark of PNF's work, and we can in fact consider him as much a painter of the cloudscape as of the land. Sandra was a deeply contemplative and poetic artist. In 1953, she made her first trip to the Holy Land traveling from Johannesburg by aircraft. The journey had a profound impact on Sumner, and the experience of this flight gave her a new perspective of the landscape. 
the view of the clouds and the shadows they cast on the deserted landscape below is one only experienced from a great height, such as from an aeroplane. Sumner would often add small details, such as telephone poles or treetops to her paintings, but this work is devoid of any intrusion. While we can recognize it as a landscape, to me, the painting celebrates empty space and silence and is a beautiful example of a private meditation.